Hello my friends, welcome to this new section on now decision tree regression. So we're about to tackle a new practical activity where we will all learn together how to build the decision tree regression model. You will see that it will be super easy based on what we did before, you know, with all the feature scaling and inverse transformation of the SVR. Now we won't have to apply feature scaling and therefore we will just smash this. All right, are you ready? Are you ready to start? Before we go into this part two regression folder, let's just make sure that everyone here is on the same page. I give you the link to this folder just before this tutorial. So you just have to click the link and then now we should all be on the same page. So we're gonna go into part two regression and then section eight decision tree regression. We're almost at the end of the regression part. Congratulations for the great progress you've made so far. And now we're gonna go of course to Python in order to find our files for this section. So there are two files here. The Python implementation of the decision tree regression model in IPYMB format, which you can open with either Google Colab or Jupyter Notebook, and our same position salaries data set containing that same data of the previous company, showing the different position levels from one to 10, corresponding to business analyst to CEO, and the corresponding salaries from 45,000 to $1 million per year. All right, so this time we're gonna train a decision tree regression model to understand the correlations between these two features. However, I have to say something important here. The decision tree regression model is not really well adapted to, you know, these simple data sets, you know, with only one feature and the dependent variable vector. You'll see what I mean by that at the end, you know, on the visualization graphs. But having said that, I would like you not to worry because the implementation of the decision tree regression model we're about to build will still work on any other data sets, you know, with several features. Here we have one feature, but the code we're about to make will work for data sets having any numbers of features. All right, so even if the results won't be beautiful in the end, well, you will still be able to use this decision tree regression implementation on your other data sets, even if they have hundreds of features. But then make sure to add some data preprocessing tools if needed. For example, if your data set has some categorical data or missing data, but you don't have to apply feature scaling for decision tree regression and neither for random forest regression, which will be our next model, you know, in the next section. All right, so that's the important thing I wanted to say here. And now we're going to start our implementation by double clicking this file here, which you can either open with Google Colab if you like, Google Colab like me, or Jupyter Notebook. All right, so choose your favorite. And now let's open Google Collaboratory. It is opening the notebook. And here we go, that's the whole implementation. All right, so as usual, now we're going to create a copy of this notebook because this is in read-only mode, which means you can't modify it or recode it. So we're gonna go to file here and then click here save a copy in drive and this will as you can see create a copy of this notebook on which you will be able to recode on it you know re-implement this decision tree regression model perfect so now you know the next step we're going to delete the code cells but since it is the third time we actually work on this position salaries data set and of course each time it's the same two first steps of the data preprocessing phase, importing the libraries and importing the data set. Well, this time we won't re-implement this. We will just leave them and not delete them. So we will just delete all the code cells from here, you know, from the step training the decision tree regression model on the whole data set. All right, so let's do this. Let's start by deleting this one because we will re-implement it together. Then this one and now this one. All right, perfect. Also, you can notice that at the end, we will only visualize the decision tree regression results in high resolution because you will see, and I will show this to you, that the decision tree regression results in low resolution, you know, without applying the grid solution, will absolutely not make sense. And I will explain that at the end of this section. All right, so we're almost ready to start now. We're going just to upload, you know, the data set by clicking this little folder here. And then right now it is connecting to runtime to enable file browsing and in a second we should be able to see the upload button here we go 
to upload indeed the data set. And now we are on my desktop. That's where I put my machine learning is it folder, but make sure to go wherever you saved it. And now inside, we're going to go to part two regression and then decision tree regression and then Python. And then there you go. You select your position salaries data set and click open. And this will upload the data set inside the notebook. And now we're ready to start. Let's just run these two cells here. The first one to import the libraries and then the second one to import the data set. All right, perfect. So now we have the data set and of course the matrix of features X containing only the position levels and the dependent variable vector containing the salaries. All right. And here, quick reminder, this model that we're about to build, you will totally be able to implement it on your data set and you will only have two things to change, which are first, of course, the name of the data set here. You will put the name of your data set and then in a matrix of features, well, maybe you will want to select all the columns. And here we just excluded the first column because this contained only the positions and strings, which are exactly the same as the levels in this column. So of course we didn't want to include it, but check your data sets, check if you want to include all the columns and mostly check if you need to apply some of the tools of your data preprocessing toolkit, which are either, you know, taking care of missing data or encoding categorical data, right? So you would need to check the variables and see if there are some categorical variables in strings. If the order matters, like for example, the size of a clothes, well, you will apply label encoder. And if the order doesn't matter, like some countries or some states, well, you will apply column transformer with one hot encoder. All right. And then you don't have to apply feature scaling. You can totally split your data set into the training set and the test set if you want to evaluate your model on new observations, but you don't have to apply feature scaling for decision tree regression and neither for random forest regression. Why is that? That's because, you know, the predictions from a decision tree regression or random forest regression model are resulting from successive splits of the data, you know, through the different nodes of your tree. And therefore there are not some equations like with the previous models. And that's why, of course, no feature scaling is needed to, you know, split the different values of your feature into these different categories leading to different predictions. We can still do this with the original scale of your features, even if your features take different ranges of values. All right. So remember this, no feature scaling and then check for the other tools, but just for your future data sets where you would like to apply decision tree regression. Okay, perfect. So we have everything. We have the data set and now we're ready to build the decision tree regression model on the whole data set, right? This time we don't want to split it. We want to leverage the maximum data to understand the correlations in this small amount of information. So we will train it on the whole data set. Then we will predict our final result, you know, the salary of the position level number 6.5. And then at the end, we will visualize what the regression curve of the decision tree regression model looks like. All right. So let's do all this in the next three tutorials, starting with this step, training the decision tree regression model on the whole data set. And until then, enjoy machine learning.